Okay, we're going to prove um, that the cosecant x over the secant x equals the cotangent of x. This is a brand new identity and we're going to show that it's true using algebra and our uh, eight fundamental identities. Now, uh, where do you start? That's the big thing. Well, a lot of the uh, identities are set up so you start with the left side. But the, the rule of thumb is you start with the most complicated expression and you work, work your way toward the more simple expression. So I'm going to write cosecant x over secant x. And I'm going to start messing with this until I hopefully get to cotan x. And I also can think ahead a little bit. I can't use both, I can't use both sides of the uh, equation to, 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 to uh, get this thing proved. I have to start with one side and stay with it. But I know I'm trying to get to the cotan, which is cosine over sine. So if I can get this to cosine over sine, then I'm there. So I can, I can think ahead a little bit of where I'm trying to go. Now, a main strategy, you have something like this, you don't know what to do. You change everything to sines and cosines, and hopefully life will get better. Well, we know the cosecant is 1 over the sine of x, long line here, and we know the uh, secant is 1 over the cosine x, okay? And then we use our, what, our rules, you know, this times the reciprocal of this. This gives us cosine over sine x, cosine x over sine x, okay? And by the eight fundamental identities, in fact, it's number uh, five, the uh, cosine x over the sine x is uh, cotan x. So I've proved it. Done. Okay, let's take another one real quick, and we'll see how we do it. So one strategy is change everything to sines and cosines, and, so, and often that works. That actually works about 50% of the time, or somewhere in the proof you do that and things get better. All right, let's try another one. How about, um, let's see, how about, uh, well, I'll find one. <laughs> okay, cosine squared x, uh, secant squared minus 1. And this equals, uh, supposed to equal sine squared x. <clears throat> now, obviously this is the more complex side, this is the simple side, so I'm going to start with this cosine squared x times time secant squared x minus 1. And I'm going to try to work my way toward this sine squared. Now there's more than one way to do this. I mean, I can see a couple ways to do this. But if I were, uh, say, uh, uh, just learning how to do this, one of the things I might think about is, if you have a product, multiply the two quantities. In other words, distribute the cosine here. If I didn't have a product, it was a sum, I might try to factor something out. In other words, I'd use algebra. So I, I think I'm just going to leap in. I'm going to multiply this, I'm going to distribute this, and I'm going to distribute this. And when I do that, I get cosine squared x times the secant squared x minus cosine squared x. Now I might say, well, yeah, I've gotten myself into a mess. Okay, I've multiplied it through and, I've, and, uh, and it looks like that, but have I really helped myself at all? Sometimes you don't, by the way. Sometimes you just get lost and then you have to figure out a new path. But I'm going to keep moving this way. And I figure, well, maybe I'll change everything to sines and cosines because I'm trying to get the sine, right? So I'm trying to get there. So I think I'll change this to the cosine squared x over 1 times 1 over cosine squared x, right, minus uh, cosine squared x, and hope that something good happens here. Well, if I multiply cosine squared x times 1 over cosine squared x, that's going to give me 1, right, cosine squared over cosine squared. So I end up with 1 minus cosine squared x, okay? Now, you've got to remember the identity. I'm just going to write it down here, the ID, sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. Let me make that clear. Okay? So uh, cosine squared, uh, my, uh, 1 minus cosine, so sine squared itself equals 1 minus cosine squared. I got that by just moving, using, remember there are three or four identities implied in each one, and another one of the identities is that sine squared equals 1 minus cosine squared. So 1 minus cosine squared equals sine squared by the, um, that identity. This happens to be identity number 6. And so I got to where I wanted to go, to sine squared. 